Okay, um, let's start. My name is Benno. Um, I'm from the Technical University of Applied Sciences in Regensburg. And um, this panel will be about stochastic methods for probabilistic runtime evaluation and also the about prediction of worst case execution times in the context of real time. Um, uh, I'm in an early stage of uh, my PhD and interested in the field of probabilistic evaluation of runtime behavior, uh, not solely from the perspective of the <coughs> academic point of view, but also um, how it can be com applied to address real world problems. Um, and that is why I'm here to discuss about some ideas um, and visions. Um, yeah. So let's just dive into um, the, the topic um, about um, analyzing um, runtime behavior. So there are several approaches uh, on how to analyze and, and uh, yeah, go for it. The, the first one is the, the static one, so inspect the code, um, but that has a lot of issues um, if you're dealing with complex systems, uh, especially with non-deterministic one. Um, so we often go with the measure-based approach um, that is often used in industry. And we are looking at a different or kind of a third one that combines the measurement-based approach with, with some probabilistic tooling and, and methods. And this one st seeks to balance the occurrency and also the, the computational feasibility of the both beforehand. So uh, the idea basically is to enhance the measure-based approach with, um, with tools or with, 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 with the stuff uh, to get better results. And why are we doing this? Well, um, as we have, as we often look at the worst case latency and worst case execution times, not interested in the average one, um, these Worst case uh, execution times are often the ones that um, occur very rarely, and therefore we have to measure a lot to actually catch them. Um, and for example, if we uh, let run a system for two days, measure all the, the latencies, um, and say, well, that, that is now enough, that is um, yeah, enough, enough data to actually trust uh, in, in the statements of re reliability and stability of my systems, uh, of my system, um, then one question would be how much level of trust can I put into a system that I just observed for five minutes? So how can I quantify the assurance of uh, worst term, of, of um, observed um, worst, worst case execution time? And one advantage of having this quantification would be to um, actually increase the turnaround times in development. So just put it put it into into measurement and and letting or as seeing what, what what happens. So maybe a little comparison between the the actual the, the current measure based approach and the probabilistic one. Uh, usually we have this scenario where we have uh, some kind of start interrupt signal event whatever and some arrival date. And hopefully this latency is smaller than the deadline we specified. Then we have this kind of distribution of latency values, and again, we are only actually interested in the in the right hand part um, of the worst case um, execution times that can be arguably seen as a two component stuff. So first of all, uh, this kind of uh, tail latency, where this represents kind of a systematic distribution of the worst case latencies, uh, and also this bar that I exaggerated some, some outliers. Um, and one of the, and this might be very familiar because um, this is often what uh, we get from tools like cycling test. Uh, on the other hand, um, or our idea is to use these measurements, this data, and put them not into a histogram but into a model. So this combination of measurement based and um, uh, model based. And uh, we do, uh, a lot of, of these in, in university, and um, the, 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 the goal is to actually, um, yeah, giving a try in, 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 at real-world problems. Um, in the field of, of the model, we, we um, go for the simplest 
one that is um, automata uh, or state machines and derive, as I said, some kind of stochastic model that incorporates um, more about the, the, the system itself, not only its, its behavior, but also the structure mo modeled as, as the state machine. Um, and two side notes. Um, first of all, these, these outliers are really hard to deal with. I think we all agree on that. Uh, and therefore, we do not seek to actually yeah, solve these uh, or automatic, automatically solve these issues related to that, but um, support developers and analysts in um, using or doing more with the data at hand. And there is a second side note. So actually this approach is highly inspired by another researcher you are very familiar with. Um, Bristol de Oliveira, who unfortunately can no longer be with us, but he did some remarkable um, work in this field of real-time evaluation and also was uh, one of the first that uh, also played around with, with state automatas in, in this field. Um, having another perspective, so this, this approach that we are striving for consists of four steps, so we kind of extract uh, an abstract representation of the system as model, where each, each state represents an effective uh, system state that does not necessarily correspond to an actual system state, where the transitions between the states are triggered by any kind of events, for example, trace points or, um, or something similar. Then um, we kind of annotate these trace points or yeah, instrument our system, which is kind of a, a mapping back of our model into the system retrieving the data, uh, combining the model and the data to derive the stochastic model, which is then, or which can then be used for um, analysis purposes and also um, the prediction of worst case latencies. Um, just an, another perspective on, of comparison, so uh, the, measurement, uh, the measurement analysis usually requires you to have at least some basic understanding of the system and precise information about the, the events happening. Um, you do, may not uh, discover all the extreme, extreme outliers, and of course you influence the actual system behavior due to the instrumentation. And for the probabilistic approach, it's basically the same. Besides, you have some, some further opportunities regarding introspection of the cause of latencies, um, the redu maybe reduced uh, measurement duration and the extrapolation of, um, of the runtime behavior regarding um, extreme values. Um, there is one example or demo, demo case I just brought you. I just want to um, skip over it very, very quickly. So a cyclic test, um, we are considering Chitta and what we did is we put some annotation points both in, in user space as well as in the kernel space to retrieve more information about what's happening in the system, in the, in the system globally, um, where some, some other user space application is executed in between. And um, we run it on a RISC-V board with uh, the, the cyclic test um, running on three isolated CPUs. Um, on the right hand side are the steps we have taken outlined um, and actually we did a very basic proof of concept impl implementation of some very lightweight trace points because we are only interested in three information the timestamp the event name and the cpu id where it um, ran on the instrumentation uh, looked something similar like this um, so again this this, what this function does is it writes these three information into a statically pre-allocated um, array that is then in the analyze step um, collected, combined with the user space data in order to, f to, to put into or merged into our model, in our stochastic model, which then gives us some um, hints and, and insights into the global runtime behavior of the, the system itself. Is the model comparable? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry? Uh, oh. Is the model computed automatically some way, or do you start from an offline specification to be um, added? 
In this case, we retrieve the model from the data. So in order to make it very lightweight and uh, comfortable for the user, um, it is retrieved out from the, da from the data. But it could also be pre-specified um, besides the data. Okay. In, in, in this case, actually, um, there are, for example, some states that was, they were never reached in, in our measurements. Okay, um, just to give you basic um, results and then we can uh, continue or start discussing, is this is what cyclic test usually gives you about the, the Chitta values. Um, and we, we did this or this measurement has, has taken seven, day, uh, seven hours and the worst case, lack, um, the, the maximum value that was observed was by uh, was at um, 56 microseconds. And we did several other measurements with um, di different um, durations. Um, this one for 10 minutes. And there is a slight shift because we do not, as again, we are not interested in the average values or all the values. We are only interested in the extreme one. We uh, throw some um, extreme value analysis on it. So we only consider the, 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 the maximum or the, the extreme values. Uh, so that's why the shift and what might be a result is then this where on in in as in green you see the actual measurements taken from 60 seconds of recording um, and the red one are the predictions that the model the stochastic model gives you um, when being fed it with uh, 60 seconds of, of measurements and on the right hand side there are two lines that highlights the actual um, observed maximum value of the measurement and also the, 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 the worst case execution time that has been predicted by the model. And there are some further measurements. You can have a look uh, in the slides uh, afterwards yourself. Um, there, because I want to uh, skip over it to actually uh, start discussing with you. Um, about uh, whether, because based on the on the on the results, we are carefully optimistic about opportunities uh, to uh, apply this method and and enhance the actual or the the the, the, the measurement approach um, until now, and we would like to have uh, yeah chat or learn from you what your thoughts and opinions are. Uh, on using stochastic methods in general um, and where it can be incorporated if it is useful, for example, if I look at uh, RTLR um, and so on. Yeah. I will start if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Uh, I already have, the, you know, I lost the, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the lock owner, so I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Uh, what is the role of the workload in this? Because maybe many of the things you observe on the system are actually workload dependent, because yeah. if we're running cyclic tests, you are doing databases or web servers or what, you may observe different distributions. Of, so uh, how do you handle that? Because, you know, probabilistic means sort of absolute probability of, but actually that is correlated to or seriously, you know, depending on the conditions. Yeah, so you mean if you have kind of uh, different trace points and the, the latency of one transition uh, is depending on another, or kind of the-, the, the Yeah, well, the one path. thing is the correlation. If, you, if mm -hmm. you handle correlations, I guess you can also compute some way in your yeah. model some correlations. But my question was more about that. E even if you get the, this bell distribution, it's actually depending on the workload. Like in the OSA DL farm, you know, while yeah. the system is yeah. idle, yeah. you get a, so, a shape. And while it is under load, you get a shape. But yes. So again, this is not an automatic tool that solves all, all, your, all your problems and all your wishes. Um, it is a tool that um, gives you power to do the, the right things maybe better. So one big, big assumption of this approach is that you or we as a developer know where to put kind of the, 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 the pins, where to actually retrieve the, the, the values and the, the, the timestamps. Um, so this is kind of 
um, an issue that we do not want to address in this approach because it is un unsolvable because, again, uh, if you would, then you would have uh, such a big model that this approach does not make sense anymore. So it is kind of having the ba or seeking for the balance of expert knowledge and where to put or carefully put the, your trace points against um, enough power to nevertheless um, yeah, use the, the st statistic methods. Um, got a question. So I actually, maybe I didn't fully understand. So you, I think you mentioned at the start uh, worst case execution time, but then the example is uh, wake up latency. I think. I yes. Mean, right. So this is um, is it kind of a different approach? Right. Yeah. Because first it, it is the, um, the, the 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 worst case latency, mm -hmm. and then it is chitta. Yeah. But it is it is you can map it if for, if you change perspective. So mm -hmm. the the chitta value is kind of you have a deadline or kind of an expected time to be waking up, and the actual or in yes. the case of, of of cyclic test and the actual time where you have been waking up, and this difference kind of can be seen or can be modeled the same way. Okay. So it is not the same. Yeah. You're no, right. no. Uh, I guess my question is uh, so. I guess the model should, uh, should be able to actually also model the worst case execution time, so essentially your response time. So when, yeah. okay, how yes. much, let's say, runtime you need every time you wake up. Yeah. Because if that's the case, I, I, one thought was uh, could be useful, for example, for SCAD deadline. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that, but essentially yeah. a CBS implementation uh, in, in the kernel. I guess uh, the number one questions we always get, uh, you have to define two parameters, runtime and period deadline. So period deadline is always easy. Runtime, uh, it's kind of tricky because you need to specify a parameter. So I was wondering if this thing, this model, since it's stochastics based on actual thing running can actually help uh, with specifying what your runtime is. So the idea is you run what you need to run for a while, and then the, that thing tells you that's probably most likely to be what you need. So that can be useful, I think. Or yep, we will, we will take this and uh, have a look into it. Yeah. Of course, that means, uh, can that just work for user space? Or is this just uh, that the is So that is uh, kind of the, one of the interesting things. This is not um, co coupled to one space or one, one domain. So you could uh, use data from kernel space, from user space, from firmware even. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you have um, the same time base, so you, you that that has been ensured. Okay, because I'm saying if you if you want to know about worst case execution time, you really do want that's how it's usually the user space that's yeah. you're worried about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, only if there's no others, if they want to. So uh, just question about this. So you showed that there were some functions you, you need to, so you, you need to hack the kernel to change the kernel code in order to enter your, you know, your monitoring points, or can you do it with, I don't know, available tools, K-probes, or I don't know what. It can be used, uh, the static trace points, et cetera, can all also be used. So in this case, we just used our very lightweight stuff to ensure that the, the influence yeah. is brought to a bare minimum. But F-Trace and all the, all the infrastructure can be yeah, used in that. Yeah, actually, since you mentioned Daniel's work, so maybe you are aware of the uh, RV yeah. uh, thing. So yes. the, the idea is essentially yes. to, to insert yes. uh, those uh, points, uh, kind of dynamic or based on your model as well. So probably can, that can be so reused exactly, in this case as well. Exactly, because we only need kind of the context, the timestamp, and which event has been occurred. Well, let's be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I apologize if I didn't fully understand the whole thing, but to what extent did you eliminate hardware effects, comma, could you use this to fingerprint individual CPU cores? Um, we did not eliminate any hardware effects. Um, about the fingerprinting, I had to think about a moment. Yeah. It's experimental. So it's, it, is, it, is, it is work in progress, and, and I'll, I'll take all the, the, the aspects with me. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious if you could actually identify individual cores based on, you know, patterns. So but anyway, there you go. 
think. Uh, Vivek, one minute. Anyone else? For one last thing. Who? Wait, was someone over here? Someone had their hand over? No, I was pointing up one minute. Oh. <laughs> 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 I don't have a point. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. anyway, thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.